<laughs> I would uh, remind you that we were doing communion as a part of our Monday Thursday service tonight, and so I would invite you to uh, get uh, a bread or cracker or, and a juice or wine or water, whatever you'd like, just to have some elements so that we can uh, share communion together. If you're having technical difficulties, you can uh, try the chat window and see if someone can give you uh, a hand. If you're not uh, part of the service this evening, we'd ask that you both keep your microphone and your video turned off because we have several folks. The deacons are all going to have reading parts in a little bit. And uh, it'll be much easier to see them if um, other folks' video is turned off. Parts of our worship will be responsive this evening, and you're invited to respond with the words that are in bold. And a couple of reminders, we have two services on Easter morning, an Easter sunrise service at 6, uh, where I hope to be outside and show you the sunrise in our uh, sunrise service, which is short, probably 30 minutes or less. And then a regular Easter worship service at 10, also on Sunday. So I hope that you can be with us for one or both of those. So let's begin our service of worship, and we'll do it with our call to worship. And again, you're invited to respond with the words in bold. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and with, also you. with you. Why is this night different? Though we are scattered, we are scattered in homes, homes, homes apartments, apartments, households, households Still, Still, we can, we can gather, gather God's in heart. God's heart. Why is this worship different? We, can we cannot gather. gather. As God tells us. Yet we, yeah, we, we can, can still, still find, find ourselves, ourselves together, together, in together in God's heart, God's heart and, love. and love. Why is this meal different? Alone, Alone with family, with, family, just with our just pets. Our pets. We, we begin, begin to understand the weariness, the uncertainty, the, uncertainty, the, the questions, questions which sat around that table long, long ago, ago with Jesus, with Jesus and, his and, his and his friends. Why is this night, this worship, this meal the same? We are, we are still, there are still God's, God's beloved who is with who us, is who is with us in these moments, moments, these days. These days, these nights, we are still, we are still the followers of Jesus, Jesus who would who wash would our, our hearts of our doubts and fears. fears. We are still, we are comforted, still comforted by the Spirit, by the Spirit who blesses the who blesses meal, the meal we share, this share this night. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn tonight is Beneath the Cross of Jesus. The words will be on the screen. I invite you to sing along. <laughs> And the 
just as on those nights long ago, we face choices. We, will we continue to live in fear or step out in faith? Will we trust in the one who is with us or listen to the hollow words around us? Let us confess our lives, our emptiness, our worries to the one who calls us, feeds us, redeems us as we pray together our unison prayer of confession. It has all disappeared our God, our certainty of how life was to be, our daily activities and jobs and routines. It has all been snatched away from us, our lunches with friends, our family gatherings on porches and in backyards. It has become so fearful, those simple things like going to the store, giving another, attending a concert, a sporting event, or even a worship service. Yet this feeling, this uncertainty, these fears are exactly what you experienced on that night so long ago, brother of our hearts. All your certainty dissipated as easily as that crowd that cheered you just a few days before. Your hopes, your dreams, your desires for your friends have been snatched away by those powers and circumstances beyond your control. Even a simple last meal with your closest friends was full of doubts, questions, recriminations as you huddled isolated from the world. So now fill us with your present spirit of that night and this night and all nights. Fill us with that grace which enables us to look beyond our fears to live as people of faith. Fill us with that love, which strengthens us to care for the most vulnerable around us rather than the most powerful. Fill us with that hope, which is never quarantined, never isolated, never separated from us in these and all the moments to come. On this loneliest of nights, on this holiest of nights, here is the good news we need. God is with us, just as with those Hebrew ancestors so long ago. God is with us, just as with Jesus and his friends that night we remember tonight. God is with us. God is with us. God is with us. In remembrance, In remembrance we, are we are together, together those scattered. Those scattered. In, in remembrance, remembrance we, we share, share bread, bread wherever, wherever we, we go. Are. In remembrance, remembrance, we drink of the cup, cup of, grace, of grace, whoever we are. We are. In, in remembrance, remembrance, we will trust, trust we, we will hope, hope we, we will live, live we will we follow. follow. Amen. Amen. We're going to enter into our time of communion. If you joined us a bit late and you did not hear, we will be celebrating communion. So if you want to run and grab a, uh, a bit of bread or a cracker and some juice or wine or water to drink, please do that while the rest of us will sing together our communion hymn. <laughs> face to the right. 
the way of Jesus goes through the cross, but we're not quite there yet. It's close. We can see its shadow. We can feel the cold, dark night. We know that the enemies of God are conspiring. They've had enough of him. He threatens their comfort. He threatens their way of life. He threatens their power, and they will come for him. First, though, we will gather. We gather with Jesus and his closest friends. We gather with those that called him teacher, rabbi, friend. Even as they were sharing the sacred meal together, the disciples were not of one heart. Jesus knew that he was asking much from these people, and he knew that they would fail him. Judas had already agreed to betray Jesus to the religious authorities. Was he angry at some slight? Was he disappointed that Jesus would not raise an army against the Romans? Was he upset with the value of the oil that the women wasted when she anointed Jesus? We will never know Judas's heart, but Jesus knew that he would be betrayed. And what did Jesus do with the man that would betray him? He broke bread with him. All of the disciples were deeply saddened and they asked, I would never betray you, Lord. It's not me, is it? On the night with which Jesus was betrayed by his friend, he took bread and he gave thanks to God. And he took the bread and he broke it and he said, take this and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. When supper was over, he took the cup again. He gave thanks to God. He broke he shared the cup with his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. And so, God, in remembrance of your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim together the mystery of our faith, which is on your screen. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. So I invite you to hold or touch the elements which you have brought for communion and let us pray. God, may the bread which is broken Remind us that we are made whole by your love, even as we seek to be faithful and caring for all those who seem so far apart from us these days. And may the cup from which we drink remind us that we are filled with your grace, so we might be people of hope in times of despair, so we might be people of love in times of anger, so that we might be people of peace in the face of fear. And so, friends, I invite you to take and eat Christ's body broken for you. I invite you to take the cup and drink the, from the cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you do this, do this in memory of him. And I invite you to say with me the prayer of thanksgiving, which is on your screen. Oh God, by coming to your table, more gifts than we deserve. We give thanks for Jesus, Jesus Christ, through whom we receive whom we life, life. And whom we are bound, we are bound covenant. in covenant. Renew us Renew so that us we may willingly, so serve, willingly serve as Christ, Christ served. Christ served. Amen. Amen. Amen.
So friends, we enter into the Tenebrae part of our service, and you will hear eight different voices offering eight readings of Jesus's journey to the cross, and then a final word for me, and then we will end tonight leaving in silence. Nancy. Shadow of betrayal. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, 
one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him one after the other, surely you don't mean me, Lord. Jesus replied, the one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The son of man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the son of man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. And Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. Jesus answered, You have said so. Shadow of Desertion Then Jesus told them, This very night you will fall away on account of me, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter replied, Even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. Truly I tell you, Jesus answered, This very night before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. But Peter declared, Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. Agony of the Soul Jesus went out, as usual, to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, Pray that you will not fall in temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him, and being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. Unshared Vigil. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and they began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Once more, he went away and prayed the same thing. And when he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? Enough, the hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Father, the hour is come. After Jesus said this, he looked toward heaven and prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son that your son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people that you might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this eternal life that they knew, now we know, the only true God in Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I have had with you before the world began. I have revealed to you those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. That they may all be one. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world 
even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may truly, truly be sanctified. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the word may be, world may believe you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. A rest in the garden. When he had finished praying, Jesus left with his disciples and crossed into the Kidron Valley. On the other side, there was a garden and he and his disciples went into it. Now Judas, who betrayed him, knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas came to the garden, guiding a detachment of soldiers and some officials from the chief priests and the Pharisees. They were carrying torches, lanterns and weapons. Jesus, knowing all that was going to happen to him, went out and asked them, who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they said. I am he, Jesus said, and Judas the traitor was standing there with them. of the cross the soldiers led jesus away into the palace that is the praetorium and called together the whole company of soldiers they put a purple robe on him then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him and they began to call out to him hail king of the jews again and again they struck him on the head with a staff and spit on him Falling on their knees, they paid homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. The Word was God. Before the world was created, the Word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was the same of God. From the beginning, the Word was with God. Through the Word, God made all things. Not one thing in all creation was made without the Word. The Word was the source of life, and this life brought light to humanity. The Word became a human being and, full of grace and truth, lived among us. The Word was in the world. And though God made the world through the word, the world did not recognize the word. Some, however, did receive the word and believed in the word, and so the word gave them the right to become God's children. This is how judgment works. The light has come into the world, but people love the shadows rather than the light because their deeds are evil. <laughs> 